Welcome back, everyone. It is Monday, and you know what that means. We got to talk about what is happening in the Hollywood. So, Barbie mania has been going on since late July. It continues to be in full force, and Mattel is really capitalizing on it in more ways than one. So, as of Sunday, the Barbie movie has officially crossed the $1 billion mark in revenue internationally. This, according to Forbes, so don't come at me. Um, this also made Greta Gerwig the first female director with a 10-figure movie, so hooray Greta. However, the story I'm here to report on is way better, in my opinion, than Billionaire Barbie, okay? So Mattel is now selling its very own version of The Weird Barbie. Now, if you saw the movie, Kate McKinnon brought this genius character to life. I mean, just look at her in all her glory. <laughs> um, the Weird Barbie is a $50 made-to-order doll now on pre-sale via Mattel Creations. The doll's choppy hairstyle and markings on her face emulate a doll that's been, quote, played with too much. Now, anyone wanting to get their hands on TWB, the weird Barbie, must pre-order by August 18th. And Barbie director Greta Gerwig said in a Rolling Stone interview how this Barbie, this character, came about. She said, quote, we grew up in a neighborhood where there were a lot of girls older than me, so I had a lot of hand-me-down Barbies that had already gotten a haircut by the time I got them. So in addition to Weird Barbie, uh, Mattel has released a number of other dolls inspired by the huge film. And my only question now is, uh, when is Alan going to get his own revival? Alan Barbie. Oh, it's coming. He was discontinued in like the 60s. Mm -hmm. 63, I think. Or yeah. Around there. Like, where is, where is Alan? By the he way, guys, too, if you want a weird Barbie, I'll do it for half the price. I'll cut that hair and I'll draw on the face. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm just saying, I can make you a weird Barbie right now. Now, granted, are you going to have the exact markings, the exact dress, the boots? No, that's why they're original Jeremy Rave creations. Okay. It is going to be like one of a kind. Did Everyone just, is different. Did you just come up with a craft for us to Maybe. do? Maybe. Let's do it. Let's make our own weird Barbies. We got Barbies. Barbies hanging on the wall in there. We do. We do from our Barbie. We movies. make our own weird Barbies, guys. And that's the thing is. I'm kind of digging this idea. I know they're going to really bank on that. Like, I'm not questioning that. Yeah, yeah. However, part of the fun and creativity is, like, creating your own weird Barbie. I know there'll be collector's items. Don't get me wrong. For sure. But it's fun when the kids, you know. like Make oh, your oh. own. Yeah. Yes. Make your we own all generation. identify with that. Yeah. With the weird Barbie. Because how many of my brothers, we used to destroy our co girl cousin's Barbie dolls. And cut their hair and draw on them. I get it. Uh, yeah. I mean, my sister did it, too. After the age she was past Barbies, I got all their hand-me-downs. And mm. luckily, they were still young at the time that they were handing them down to me, so they weren't messed up. But then one day, I was like, let's go to the salon. And I go, mm. what do you mean? And we had this cute little pond in our, like, our base, our atrium. And so we would swim with, swim with them. That would be wait, the Wait, wait, you had a pond like a in very your atrium? Like a little tiny one that sounds really bougie, and it's not. You are so rich. No, I'm not. No, but anyways, it's defunct now. <laughs> anyways, we'd take a first swim. We'd get yelled at by my dad, and then we'd go into the bathroom, and Allie would cut their hair and then take these little, like, uh, color things that we could do to our own hair, color them up, and it literally would just be like, like, the hair would go straight back. And she's That's like, okay, it. next one. I messed up that one. She tried to give it layers, all the things. That's okay, Maddie. We fed our Barbies caviar from the kitchen. So we were just like, yeah, we have some leftover caviar. Oh, you know, you had your butler serve them the There's caviar. Like, Could you feed the Barbies caviar, please? Don't make me throw this wand at you. I'm going to go swimming in the pond in our atrium. If you were to see it now, you'd be like, oh, gosh. It's so tiny. Like, it's weird. My dad went through it. a phase. Anyways, let's move on. Okay, the next story, I Whoa. swear. I, I didn't mean to get you so riled up. You are very, I was just kidding. It's okay. You. I'm in my what the Hollywood mode. Okay. This next story, I, I want to say it now. I put this out into the universe like a week or so ago. And now this story could be coming to fruition. We all know Taylor Swift is on her Eras tour. Yes, 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 yes. And there are no signs of her slowing down, given she just added even more dates to the U.S. and Canada Ooh. next fall 2024. So, given how much hype, media coverage, and international fanfare this specific tour has gotten, I felt deep down in my bones there's no way she isn't making a documentary out of this. And if I may just provide evidence of my own unfortunate manifestation. God, her fans are loyal to her. I feel like I smell another docu-series about her coming out. Oh, she had one a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. I just sure, love her. <laughs> Well, why don't you know, the old Conklin cranium is still working because TMZ reported over the weekend that camera crews have been following Taylor's every move and the entire Eras tour. Camera crews have been present at just about every Eras tour show thus far, getting plenty of shots of Taylor, her fans, and some behind-the-scenes content. Mind you, remember she paid all her truckers a hefty 
little lump sum and then the caters and everything. Um, TMC, TMZ, excuse me, has spoken to sources who say there's not yet a plan for the project, whether it, it'll end up on streaming or in theaters, but as we all know, it could be a multi-million dollar deal with the Netflix. So, thoughts, Jeremy? I'm gonna I know be you quiet. Got... I'm gonna be quiet because I don't want the Swifties coming after me. Would you watch it? No, I didn't watch the first one. Okay, so here's my thing. I am not a Swifty. I don't actively seek Taylor Swift anything. I did because of the job I was in at the time and the amount of Swifties I worked with, I had to kind of fake it. So we did watch the first one, which I forgot is like Miss, Miss Americana is the documentary. It was very interesting to see kind of her side of things. Granted, I did feel she kind of played like the, oh, I'm Taylor, like I, I know nothing, like bull, you know. Uh, I get bullied all the time, but you know. Okay, I will say one thing. Okay, okay I will say one thing. I open the door for Because her. Matt, Michael Badcock, last week we were talking to him, yes. as that clip you played, said that she's very calculated with what she's doing. Yes. Here's my thing. Growing up in the church and growing up with a grandpa who's a pastor who had no money at all, would always preach about doing things not for the glory, but do it because it's right. Mm -hmm. So if the cameras are following her and she decides to give all these bonuses and is made now public, to me that should have been kept private. Like if the truck drivers came forward to say, oh, I'm so, you know, that's a different story. Yeah. But if it's in the documentary, if she's doing it for self glorification, I have a problem with that because right. you should not do good things just to get the, like, look how great Taylor is. Right. But like Michael said, she's very calculated. Her team is. Her team. On what is. they release. I'm right. not saying it's necessarily her. Yeah. But they are very like, I, that's just my opinion. That's my opinion. That's my opinion. Please don't come after me. I'm just saying. I, I agree. If it is in the documentary and like all that, then it is a little like. Self-glorification. Self-glorification, yeah. Pride cometh before the fall. Like self-satisfaction, yeah. Yes. So we'll see. We'll see what happens again. No plan yet. Again, don't come after me. I'm just saying. We'll wait to see. Yes. And I just admitted I'm not a Swifty, so there you go. You come at me, I guess. Um, Jeremy, this final story will either make your jaw hit the ground, very annoyed, or both. We'll Both. see. I don't know. I don't know the story. Uh, okay, it's been a minute since we talked about Vanderpump Rules and Scandaval, but alas, here I am with new news regarding one Tom Sandoval and one Jax Taylor. The former Sir Bartender and Vanderpump Rules alum, Jax Taylor, has changed his tune about Tom Sandoval. Now, for those of you not privy to their relationship, they were roommates, they were friends, they were enemies. Basically, Jax Taylor made it public knowledge that he despises Tom Sandoval and has known for years how much of a cheater, liar, and overall bad person he is. But now, Jax is saying he, quote, wants the best for Sandoval and asks fans who are still upset over Sandoval to move on. And, funny enough, he even offered him a job at his new bar, Jax's, via, via a tweet over the weekend that he has since deleted. Here's the tweet. So Sandoval, if you need a job, let me know. Coming soon, Jax's Studio City. Well, he deleted it, and after getting called out on Instagram for it, Jax then felt the need to do some damage control and commented about his tweet, saying, quote, we have a long history, and we like making it fun at each other. It's harmless. Don't read into things. I want the best for Tom. He's going through a lot, and I know he deserved a lot of it, but I think it's time we just let things heal or be and move on. No point in grilling the guy anymore. We have all made mistakes in life, end quote. Now, I wonder if this is all part of a plan for Jax to return just in time for season 11 of Vanderpump Rules, which is currently in production. What do you think? What I don't, you I've not heard of him filming yet. It's August. They're supposed to wrap in September. Not heard about Raquel being there, or Rachel now. I'm sorry, she goes by Rachel now. Rachel, yeah. Um, I've not heard of Rachel filming yet. And there's been, behind the scenes, I've read stories too that their, their trip to Lake Tahoe or wherever they went yeah. was absolute pandemonium. Yes. So I'm just like, I... I do, and again, I would love Jackson, Brittany, and Stassi and Kristen to return. I'm a diehard. Kristen was spotted filming. I'm a diehard fan for, for them all to return. Uh -huh. However, if they're going to create the drama, do they need them? Really quick, though, what do you think about Jax changing his tune about Sandoval? For it, no, that is for the show. That you, Definitely. That is. I think, I think because he wants to film with him and he's going to need somebody to film with Sandoval. Yeah. And they've had such that rocky past. Yeah. And they know each other. They know where all the bodies are buried. Like, yeah. they know each other's secrets. Yeah. Those boys had a boys club like you would not believe. They were a vault. Okay. Until recently. And then they've started to let things slip. Yeah. But. Mainly Jax. Like, I swear I saw an interview last week where he was like, he, he texted my wife while he was in Kentucky and I called him and I said, you never talked to my wife. 
Now it's all of a sudden like, hey, let's forget about it. So With reality TV, we know this. You have to film with people, and you want your job, you want that paycheck, and they want to get back on the show, so they'll do what it takes. Sometimes you just got to say, Jack Taylor, what yeah. the Hollywood? Yeah. <laughs> all right, don't go anywhere. When we come back, we have a fun craft for you. Uh, we'll be right back, friends. Gosh, I'm getting fired up already. I know, right? I, I thought that's right.